Hey, y'all. How y'all doing today? Uh, William, Albritton, and we'll talk about secondary, secondary devices today. And if you think about secondary devices, well, begs the question, how about the primary device? Okay, let's, well, what's that first? Let's see. Let's move to our slides and see. The primary storage, uh, a lot of times uh, you might hear the word RAM, or random access memory. Okay, so this is primary storage. And what's going on with this is it's temporary storage for the data and the programs while the CPU is processing it. Okay, so while the, the CPU is running, it's got to process these things. And the RAM is very close to the CPU, so it's very fast. Now, the drawback is once you turn the power off, guess what? It's gone, man. So, um, you know, what? Oh, crap, where's my data, man? What, what happened, man? All right, so that's, that's why um, we don't, that's why we need something besides primary storage. You know, primary storage is near the CPU, so it's cranking through it, it's running, 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 running. And then you turn the power off, so boom. Um, Hey, what's up? So that's why we need a secondary storage. So we're going to talk a lot about that today. All right, so secondary storage. Let's look at those slides there. And so what is it exactly? Why do we need it? Well, this is where we store data even if the power is off, okay, as in not on. And um, so we got a couple purposes for doing this. One thing is just, hey, we got to save the data somewhere. Right? Got to save it. And then two, well, you might want to back it up. Okay, you might have extra copies that you save somewhere to back up. And then three, you want to transport data. Okay, you want to take data from one place to another. And, um, you know, you might uh, store that in some kind of uh, portable drive and you walk around with it. Or uh, you might put it on, on the, the internet and bam, 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 store it store it somewhere else. Okay, so let's see some of the um, more about secondary storage here and we'll talk about common characteristics. So what's what do these things all share? Uh, one is the media. Okay, so there's some kind of physical uh, thing <laughs> they're stored on, some kind of physical material. And we also got to think about uh, what can access that physical material. So there's some kind of hardware that you're using to you know, read from that material and then write to that material. Okay, so um, you have the material and then also what's going to kind of interact with that material is what's going on. Okay, so what else uh, that we have here? A big thing is capacity, right? So how much can you store? Um, you know, more is not necessarily better, I guess. Yeah. Anyway, you want to make sure how much you can store. And then last but not least is performance. Okay, sometimes you might think about that as speed or lack thereof. Yeah. Okay, so performance, think about speed. Now, how fast can we access this data? Okay, so... You know, usually you plug something in or, you know, USB drive or, or you know, whatever, your uh, DVD or Blu-ray, and it's, you know, pretty quick with uploading, but uh, some, you know, depending on the, what we have, depending on the, the kind of uh, device that we're using to store the data, it, 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 there's different times and, and, and performance uh, values there. Okay, so let's see. Let's, let's mosey on here. See what else we got. Okay, so let's get some examples. You're like, hey, what's what's going on? Well, one thing is a hard disk drive. Okay, that's an example of the secondary storage. And then the optical disk. Okay. Also, we got the solid state storage. And then cloud storage. You might think you're in the wrong class now. Okay, no, we're not talking about the weather. We're talking about computers. And um, Mass storage devices, okay, they store lots and lots and lots and lots and then lots, lots and lots of data. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll talk about these five. These are the main things, main five uh, devices and drives that we have for secondary storage. And, of course, there's advantages, disadvantages to all of these. 
OK, hard disk drives. All right, so I don't know if you'll ever open up a computer and then open up what's inside that. Uh, but um, you got these disks that rotate super fast. And they have this magnetic coating. Um, and that is what represents the ones and zeros. OK, this magnetic coating. Um, you know, either it's, it's, it's on or off, or it's a certain charge or not a certain charge. And, okay, these disks or these platters, um, they're coated with this kind of stuff. And then it, it, it divides the disks down into different parts. Uh, you got tracks, you got sectors, you got cylinders. So tracks, you can just think as um, like a almost, I don't know if you all know record players anymore, but uh, a track is kind of like a record player, right? You got, or a record from a record player. Um, this is just the round part there that goes all the way around. So that's what they call a track. Then you got platters, um, um, or sectors of the platter. Okay, so sectors are pie-shaped wedges. All right, so that's you know part of the, the the platter that you have, part of the disc. Okay, and then cylinders. So actually, you got a bunch of these discs all lined up, and then if you, you take that kind of line or that section, that's called a cylinder. Okay. So you got those three different uh, ways of storing data on there. And then these storage devices, they have some complicated algorithm that some super brilliant engineer figured out and a real effective way to store the data and then they pull it back out and uh, that kind of stuff. OK, so that's all I got to say about that. Uh, but do look at the textbook, and it has nice drawings of these different sections in the round part. OK, let's, let's mosey on. Uh, and see what we got next here. Uh, for the hard disk drives, uh, again, you have um, the data is accessed by this small magnetic head. And it actually has two motors, so kind of weird. It's got one motor spinning the disk, and then another motor that's moving around. They call it a read write head, the, the magnetic head that's used to, to, to read the data that's on there. And it's extremely small. If you even get a speck of dust in this, this device, It'll um, crash it. It'll mess, mess it all up. So that's why they are contained. OK, so internal hard drive is kind of what we're talking more about right now. So they're contained inside the system unit. And what they're fast, so that they're real close to everything. But they're fixed in size, right? And you know, it says difficult to remove. It's not impossible to remove. I've done it. Um, I mean, you can take these things out, open them up. And they're not going to work again But once you open them up. But you know, after that, trying to destroy your data and you get a hammer or something. At any rate, so you have external hard drives, right? So same thing almost. Uh, you plug it in uh, with the USB or FireWire port and use traditional storage and our backup. So that, that, that's a good topic, backup, and we'll get more into that later. But it's a good, good, good idea to back up whatever data you have. OK, so this is one way of doing it with an external hard drive. And where do you put the external hard drive? OK, that's the question of the day. Where do you put it? Wherever you put it, it's not right next to your computer, OK? So the, the backup is, is used for if there's some kind of disaster or, I don't know, like water leaks into your apartment or, you know, house burns up, you know, knock on wood. But um, so you want to store that at a different place, maybe your workplace, maybe your grandmother's place, maybe your folks' place, maybe. Um, you know, good friend's place. But you want to store your data separate from where you have your computer, your, your backup data, that is. OK, let's see what else we have on here. And we also have optical disks. So it's just a flat disk, uh, circular, that's used to store data. And they have these flat areas called lands, uh, these indentations called pits. And depending on the light reflects uh, from those two, then that uh, represents the ones and zeros. And you have a laser that's used to read and write uh, from the disk. And it's also organized into tracks and sectors. We don't have a cylinder because there's just a one disk. OK, and you all are pretty familiar with this probably. You know, we have the, the kind of older stuff, CDs, that was just for audio files for a while. Of course, now we can use it to store any kind of data. And then we also have the DVDs. Okay, and they store about seven times more data than the CDs. 
And more recently, Blu-ray discs would store about uh, 10 times more than DVDs. So we're, we're putting more stuff on these little things. Okay, so um, again, that's optical storage, using a laser to read that stuff. And it's just seeing where you have these little pits in there, and it can tell the ones and zeros from that. Okay, so what else we got today? Two, uh, a few more things here. The, you have solid state storage. And that's using an integrated circuit to store the data. And the good thing, there's no moving parts, OK? But kind of more, uh, and then also it's quicker to access the data as compared to, say, hard disk drives, because you're not moving stuff around. And then it is more expensive per unit. So usually you have these kind of trade-offs uh, with these devices. So what's it good for? Well, uh, really good to put it in the system unit, especially um, for like laptops and mobile devices. It you know, requires less power. And then what else? Uh, it does cost more um, and store a little less data than the hard disk drives. OK, so things you all are probably already uh, used to, the flash memory cards are examples of this. And it's kind of a flat card format to store things. And then also USB flash drives. They're really uh, popular the past couple of years. Uh, small devices, portable, and connect, to, connect to the USB port. Now, the disadvantage with these is, OK, if you find a USB drive, um, what do you not do? OK, you do not plug it into your computer. OK, apparently there was a nuclear power plant nuclear power plant that got taken over by a virus. And they think that that was from these little flash drives that the hacker or hackers put in the parking lot uh, to the nuclear f power, point, uh, power plant facility. <laughs> OK. So uh, anyway, so long story short, uh, don't uh, plug in um, USB devices that you don't know, uh, that aren't yours, that you don't know what's on them. OK, let's see, One, two more little topics here that we'll cover, and then we'll call it a day. So you got cloud storage. So this is really big lately. Uh, online storage. Um, companies will store the data for you online. Uh, Google Docs or Dropbox is a good example. Now, it's great, it's convenient, but you do lose some control over your data. So you got to kind of think, well, where is it stored? And, well, who has access to it? So you're going to have a trade-off with that. So just be aware what's going on with that. OK, so last but not least, in large companies, they have what's called a mass storage device. And it's data storage that stores large amounts of data, like a file server. Another example is a network attached storage, like a miniature server. And then you might have RAID, so a redundant array of independent disks. So that's used to automatically back up storage in a large organization. OK, so that's all I got to say about the secondary storage. And um, we'll mosey on to our next topic. All right.